Last time we introduced what a truth table was, and today we're going to show how to use truth tables to show that two formulas are equivalent to each other. So here we go. We say that two formulas, or statements, phi and psi are logically equivalent if they both output the same truth table. That means on each line of the truth table, we get exactly the same output. So here's a question. Are phi and psi equivalent to not phi or psi? So we're going to construct a truth table for this statement here and a, this statement here, and we're going to see if every line outputs exactly the same. As soon as we find one line that is not similar, we can conclude that they are not equivalent. So let's do this. First of all, let's start with our first line here. If phi is true and psi is true, then we know that phi and psi are true. So when we look at our end results, we're going to be looking at these two lines. I should mention in discrete mathematics, what they do for these truth table proofs is every step has its own column. So that's what we're doing here in this fourth column right here. We are doing the step before we negate it. In a philosophical logic course, you wouldn't do this. You would just put them all in the same row and just write things like this. You'd put a one here, a one here, and then you could claim that a one is in the middle. But I will do it the way that you will probably be doing it in class. So phi or psi requires that at least one of them is true, which we know is going to be true. And the negation of it just says that whatever the value is in this column, we just subtract one from it. So this becomes zero. So we can see right away that we have a one in our first line for phi and psi, but we have a zero in our first line for phi or psi. Well, not phi or psi. Which means that these two formulas here are not equivalent. And for the sake of completion here, the next three rows are going to be zeros in phi and psi, since we require that both be true. We know phi or psi is a 1, 1, 0 truth table, which means it's false only when both disjuncts are false. And for the negation, we just switch the values. And again, we see a contradiction in these two lines on the bottom here. However, what we do see is they are similar in, in two rows of the truth table. This does not mean they are equivalent. They have to be the same in every single line of the truth table to be equivalent. So here we've shown that these two formulas are not equal to each other. Therefore, if we say have phi and psi in a proof, we cannot change it to not phi or psi. So we can't infer that from the original. Let's take a look at this one. Is not phi and psi the same as not phi or not psi? Let's start filling this out. Okay, not phi. Well, we're just going to change the ones to zeros and the zeros to ones. In not psi, we're going to do the same. So we get kind of an upside down truth table here. Now for the disjunct, well, at least one of them has to be true here. So zero, zero gives us a zero. A zero and a one will give us a one. A one and a zero will give us a one. And a one and a one will give us a one. Okay. Now what about the conjunct table for phi and psi. Well, by now you should know that this is a 1, 0, 0, 0 truth table with two statements. So right now we see that these are actually total opposites, but we're going to be saved by this negation here because this is going to change all the values to the opposite, which means that these two truth tables output the exact same values which means that these two statements are equivalent. So if in a proof, we're put in some situation where we say, oh, it's 
not both this and this, then we can say that, well, it's actually not this or it's not this. So there are two ways of looking at this. And in fact, this is something called De Morgan's Law. That if you have P or Q and you negate it, then you get not P and not Q. And this works if you switch the signs here as well. So you also get uh, not phi or psi is the same thing as saying not phi and not psi. But we'll get to that later. We'll talk about those laws next time. But for now, I want you to show that P or not P is always true using a truth table. Okay, so by now, hopefully you've tried this. But if not, well, let's do it together here. We need to set up a truth table. So first we need to find the values for P. Then we need to find the values for not P. And then we need to finish with P or not P. And we should probably put our one truth table there. And we know that one is always going to output a one. That's how we defined it. So we need to make P so we have a one and a zero. Not P is going to be the opposite values. And P or not P, at least one of them has to be true. So the first line is going to be true because P is true. And the second line is going to be true because not P is true. Therefore, we have that P or not P will always output a 1. And this is called a theorem or a tautology. In discrete math, these words aren't necessarily interchangeable. In philosophy, they sort of are. If you've proven in your logic system that theorems are tautologies, but these are two words we use for this. And basically this means that P or not P will always be true. For instance, I can say that 2 is in the integers or 2 is not in the integers. Well, yeah, it's either in or it's out. This is obvious of anything that we talk about. You are alive or you're not alive. Yeah, it's pretty pretty obvious and straightforward. So this is truth table proofs. Obviously they can get a lot more complicated, but it's really just about doing it step by step and doing it mechanically over and over again. If there's any ones you want me to do in another video, leave them in the comments and maybe I will respond to them or do a video on them. But I didn't figure I need to do a big long one because it's really just a mechanical process that you repeat over and over and over again. So hopefully you're okay. If not, just leave it in the comments and I will address it either in text or through another video.